Here we go with the AFC South for uh, my NFL preview. The Indianapolis Colts, they will be the three seed overall in the AFC this year. The Colts, they just, they're so solid. Their offense is prolific as ever with Marvin Harrison returning. And Reggie Wayne, though, is the main guy now. But Marvin Harrison's still a pretty good second receiver at 36 years old. He still will definitely contribute. Anthony Gonzalez will step up as a as the third uh, as the slot receiver. Dallas Clark had a great year last year. Will not have those and will not duplicate those numbers this year. Will not have double digit touchdowns because Marvin Harrison's coming back. So he's going to take away a lot of those targets as well as Anthony Gonzalez as he matures. But Joseph Adai, one of the most versatile backs in the NFL, and of course Peyton Manning, a perennial uh, Pro Bowler. All pro and Hall of Famer, feature Hall of Famer, that's for sure. And uh, defensively, Bob Sanders, Defensive Player of the Year, reigning Defensive Player of the Year. If he can stay healthy like he did last year and play in all 16 games, then this defense is one of the best units in the NFL because his leadership and his instincts are just incredible. And Dwight Freeney is coming back from that right foot injury, and the Coastal will ease him in. But Gary Brackett, middle linebacker, very underrated, and is definitely one of the Colts' leaders. The nucleus is still there, and uh, Jeff Saturday, though, losing him for six weeks, that could be tough, but I, I think, overall, just the system that Tony Dungy sets up is just golden all the time. The Tennessee Titans will be the fifth seed in the AFC. I love their defense. Albert Hainsworth, I will talk about him. He's definitely one of the top defensive players in any position in the NFL. And uh, a defensive tackle, great player, great run stuffer. Just, you know, he can rush the passer if he wants to. He can beat any of the interior linemen, offensive linemen that try to block him. I mean, he's he's a great player. And uh, Cal Vandenbosch, very good pass rusher, defensive end. You have Keith Bullock, who's, who's put up numbers, great tackle numbers throughout the years. And then you have one of the two, one of the best uh, uh, safety combos in Chris Hope, strong safety, and free safety Michael Griffin second year out of uh, Texas. But um, this year is a critical year for Vince Young, but people need to realize Vince Young still, you know, he may not have the mechanics, he may not have the skill set, but the guy is a winner. Those wide receivers, he's going to need their support. Justin Gage uh, has to have a big year, and Algie Crumpler as well, a tight end. But the running back combination, this combination, Lendell White, Chris Johnson, could be the top running back tandem in the league. I mean, Lendell White runs in between the tackles and great goal line uh, back, as well as Chris, John Chris Johnson. Let me tell you about him. I was a fan of his at East Carolina. This kid definitely is one of the most versatile backs in the league. He had over 1,900 yards in total uh, in yards from scrimmage. Actually, 2,900 yards in total yards uh, when you include kick return yards a thousand kick return yards and then 1900 combining rushing and receiving this kid is definitely going to that's going to be a nice thunder and lightning combination for sure now but um like i said they have the and jeff fisher is one of the top coaches in the nfl and they will definitely make the playoffs jacksonville jaguars everyone's picking them to make the playoffs i don't think so i think their defense has taken a step back losing marcus stroud is very it's a tough loss. Cornerback Rasheed Mathis had a had a regression actually last year after being an All Pro in 2006. And uh, Reggie Nelson, he's shown some progress, but he still is inconsistent. And Mike Peterson, linebacker, he's not healthy. That's the problem. I think the secondary they struggled a lot as the season went on, and it will struggle more. And David Garrard definitely, you know, he's the heart and soul. Good leader, but he will throw more than three interceptions this year. I think defenses, defensive coordinators will be able to really key in on him and have a game plan to neutralize him. And, and that's, I think that's going to be a factor. And the receivers, when will they step up? Supposedly Matt Jones is stepping up in the preseason. And then, he, you know, he does this all the time, and then he disappears in the regular season. And then uh, also, too, Reggie Williams disappears. So, um, I, and, you know, I just, I just really think this team um, will just has flaws that will not help them make the playoffs. But look out for Maurice Jones-Drew. He will be – I will talk about him later. Him and Fred Taylor, good tandem, but Maurice Jones-Drew will, will stand out this year. Houston Texans, a lot of great young talent. Two of the top – uh, defensive players, uh, young defensive players in the, in the NFL with Mario Williams, who I felt should have been picked number one. I was one of the few people that said that, and I proved to be right. And D'Amico Ryans, who I love from Alabama, uh, former uh, defensive rookie of the year in 2006. And um, these guys, they're going to make the pro, pro Bowl, no question about it. Secondary is still green. That's the problem. Uh, with um, with Dante Robinson being out until midseason, we don't know if Robinson will have that 
that same level of play like he had last year. We just don't know. But Matt Schaub will break out. I will talk about Matt Schaub later on. He will definitely break out this year, not just because of Andre Johnson, who's who's top-notch receiver, but also, too, Kevin Walter, Andre Davis. Both those receivers stepped up last year when Andre Johnson was injured, and that gives Matt Schaub weapons, you know, second, third option, and then another option in Owen Daniels, tight end. He stepped up last year. So they have a lot of offensive weapons. The running back by committee, though, don't know about that. And the offensive line is still average at best. That's why Houston, people are picking them to be a breakout team. I think 2009, the Houston Texans will definitely break out. But this year, I'm not sure about them uh, being able to make those strides. Now 